There are many people who have been led astray by wrong doctrine, and one of the most troubling issues was concern, is concerning salvation. A lot of people worried if they're really saved or if they will lose salvation. Christians believe salvation by faith alone, not by works. We believe you can never lose your salvation. Because why? There are so many verses in the Bible that prove that Christians are saved by faith. Yeah, this black thing is not working. So, so they were saved by faith. Uh, we are saved by faith, not by works. There are so many verses. However, there's a problem. There seems to be verses that seem to show faith and works for salvation. So what do we do with those passages? It's very simple. You're going to most likely find it divided to a different time period. That's what you're going to most likely find. You're going to say, really? Yes, those verses will be applying to either the Old Testament time period to Jews or in the tribulation time period to Jews. So, teaching this doctrine, which is called dispensational salvations, has helped many people out there. So I would recommend watch my intermediate discipleship video three and four and follow the homework assignment and then you'll understand all this because I'm not going to expound all this right now. Okay. What I'm going to do right now though is this, is that there are people who attack dispensational salvations. Why? This has been rescued so many souls out there. Why would you do that? So what they would do is that they will try to dishonestly make the Old Testament faith alone tribulation faith alone. When you do that, that's not going to convince the reader or the different cults out there when they look at the verses because it really seems to show faith and works. Yeah. What's better to do is to divide it, Amen. saying, no, that faith and works verse for salvation is not to us Christians. Amen. That's to Jews in the Old Testament or to a different time period. So in the tribulation, we believe that it's going to be faith and works for salvation, and Christians, notice, are not in here. This is for people in the tribulation. So this is some of their dishonest arguments, how they argue against this. So my teaching about why the Antichrist hates tribulation salvation. That's the title of that video. I defended already about why tribulation salvation is faith and works. Watch that video first before you watch this one, because this one... I'm going to defend against my critics out there. Okay, now the critics, what they would like to do is this, is that they're going to use Matthew chapter 24 and 2 Thessalonians 2. So go to Matthew chapter 24, and then we're going to look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Matthew chapter 24, and then we'll look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, I am not against people. I mentioned this before in my videos earlier, so let me just repeat again for some people out there who get sensitive and softy, okay? I totally understand people out there who, have a, who did not believe in dispensational salvation because the reason why is you are brought up from an independent fundamental Baptist environment. Because of that, you're bound by your tradition. But who I'm kicking against is people who steal and learn from Bible-believing works like ours, yeah. and then what they do is that they act like some kind of elitist and critique all of them out there. And they have the audacity to say, oh, these Bible-believing preachers think that they're, that they're untouchable. How dare you question us? You know what your problem is? You never took care of a ministry and a church before. And if you did that, you would understand the pain of people criticizing and being nitpicky with you. And if you doubt that, then you people who watch those kind of arrogant, prideful people, then you got to do this. Why don't you criticize them? Why don't you oppose them and see how they respond? You know how they'll respond? They'll post endless 20 videos against you. That shows how their spirit is, you know, in being such a great hypocrite. They think they have the right to question us, but then when you question them, then they get all mad and post 20 videos at you. This is not unifying the body of Jesus Christ. Okay, now anyways, let's get back to here. So then why would I defend dispensational salvation so strongly? Why would I do that? Because it rescued a lot of souls out there. Amen. It did. All right, so I'm not going to get into all that. I already mentioned that several times. The people watching us online are the evidence. You can mention that in your comment below this video too. But anyways, let's just get back to the topic right here. 
OK, so how they defend this argument is this. We obviously believe that there is faith and works involved. Why? Because you have to resist the mark of the beast. Now look, if you resist the persecution of the Antichrist and resisting the mark of the beast, that's a lot of work. Amen. Because if you're having a hard time living for Jesus under persecution right now, how much more under the, the persecution of hell itself? So their argument around this is, God will protect his elect. You don't believe God has the power to protect his elect? What is that? You know what they get rid of? They get rid of free will right here. So that's a Calvinist argument again. Calvinist, Calvinist, Calvinist argument right here. But then what they're going to argue is, no, no, no. He, God protects his elect from being deceived. Because look at verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Okay, why are these people deceived? Why did their love wax cold? So my enemies will claim it's because they did not do this first. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 through 12. Verses 9 through 12. It's because they did not receive the love of the truth. See that? So because they did not get saved by faith first, that's why they got deceived into a lie. But if you got saved by faith first, you will not fall into this deception. That's how they argue. Because look at verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. See, that's why they're deceived. Because they did not get saved by faith first. Verse 11, and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So that's how they argue. They argue that these people got deceived because they did not get saved by faith first. But if you're saved by faith first, you won't fall into deception. Okay, you know what the easy, easy answer to that is? This is only to, talking about Christians being raptured away from the deception of the Antichrist. It's not tribulation saints. You might say, no, 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 okay. Look at right here. Verse 10, the love of the truth, right? Verse 10, these are the people who follow not the love of the truth, right? Okay, who is the love of the truth? Verse 13, but we are bound to give thank always, thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord. See, these are saved Christians. Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to uh, salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the what? That's why we're not going to fall into the deception of the Antichrist. Because we, got, we Christians, see, separated from the tri tribulation timeline. Obviously, we're not falling to this deception. Why? There's a division right here. Do you see this? There's a division right here. Do you see this? That's why we're not here. What happens? Keep reading. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the what? Glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're called to glory. That's the rapture. Duh. That's the reason why. There's your easy answer. But if you're left behind, you know what you are? You got to, there's so much strong deception going on. That's why you got to resist. Because look back at Matthew 24. Matthew 24. This is so dishonest right here. Look at this. Verse 11 through 12, okay? And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. See, there's so much deception. Verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. See that? The love is losing. Because of this, verse 13, contrast. See that? But, but, in other words, verse 13 is going to show you the solution against verse 11 and 12, yep. not to fall the, into this deception. What do you do? Isn't this works? He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. See that? You have to endure. You have to work. There's your answer. Now, the total dishonesty. What they're going to do is jump to verse 22. And I think I mentioned this before, but I'll just repeat it again. Look at verse 22. They're going to argue, no, no, no. What it means by enduring to the end to be saved is physical survival. <laughs> Why? Because of verse 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should what? 
no flesh be saved. See, this is talking about saving your physical flesh. It's physical survival. This has nothing to do with your spiritual salvation by works. This is just physical survival right here. That's what they're going to answer right here. Um, okay, you know what the simple debunking to that is? Verse 22, it said, and, right? Okay, this physical survival is in context of what? Verse 21, look at the, look at the following verses and see how this is physical survival. This matches with verse 20. Two, 21, do you see that? 20, do you see that? 19, that's physical survival, right? 18, physical survival, right? 17, 16, right? Verse 15, right? Oh, it's talking about the tribulation, but it's talking about the physical survival from 15 through 22. Now. Let's look at verses 14 and up, okay? Verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom, is that physical survival? No. Notice this has to do with your spiritual condition. Let's skip verse 13, right? Because they like to say physical survival. So let's say verse 14 is spiritual condition. 13, physical survival. Verse 12, is that physical survival or is that a spiritual condition? Spiritual condition. Verse 11, isn't that a spiritual condition? Yes. You know what they are doing? They're deliberately ignoring the context. They, they play hopscotch by jumping to verse 22, and they skip all those verses by context. You know who does that? The devil. The devil is very good in skipping scripture, and he sure did that with Jesus when he tempted him. You know what you are? I mean, I thought you're KJV only reading the whole Bible as it says. You like to skip, pick and choose like an Alexandrian scholar. No, no, 13 is physical survival. Okay. No, let's just do, let's go slowly here, shall we? Verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Right? Yes. Spiritual condition. Verse 12. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Right? So 11 and 12 talks about a deception and your love growing cold. That's a spiritual condition. Can we all agree? I, I read it, right? Do you want me to go slow? No, no I'm not going to do that. You just rewind and just repeat what I just explained here, okay? Verse 13, but what does that mean? There's something you have to contrast to resist this spiritual deception going on. There's something you spiritually must do. He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And then verse 14 talks about the gospel of the what? Kingdom. Doesn't this make so much more sense now? Okay, total dishonesty. Total dishonesty. Matthew 24 is not just all about survival, survival, survival. Are you like Alex Jones and the new IFB cult then? Survival, 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 survival. What are you doing right here? Matthew 24 is about... Survival, the rapture, regathering of Israel, second coming of Christ, persecution, and obviously what you must do to be saved, salvation. That is so obvious. As much as they would like to say fiscal survival so that they can enter the millennial kingdom, I'll let them shoot off their mouth and then I'll, and I'll be ready to debunk it with another teaching where it shows that entering the millennial kingdom, it does rely on your works for salvation right there in the tribulation. So I'm going to prove that notion later on. So go ahead and shoot off your mouth, dig a hole, and keep correcting the King James Bible. Everyone will watch and they will see. They will watch and they will see. And I'll just keep building up arguments. You just strengthen Bible-believing dispensationalists with stronger arguments. By keep doing this, criticizing us, you're going to dig a deeper hole, and you're only going to prove my point where I abided by the Scripture and came up with even more arguments. You dug your own grave. And you know what's going to happen? Bible believers who watch me online, they're going to take these arguments. And they're going to dismantle all those people out there who taught false dispensationalism, wrong dispensationalism. You are not helping your case, buddy.